the Atlantic Highway. Super clear to see. Airplanes everywhere. An infinite stream. An endless rush. But what is more beautiful? Tranquilo, auf Segelschiff. In our society, we often prefer to take an airplane to transport ourselves. I too was a frequent flyer for my jobs and to go on holidays. My flights amounted to more than half of my yearly CO2 emissions. This did not make me happy. I'm Joop and I'm a climate scientist. I got offered a new research position in Boulder, a small university town in the American state of Colorado. Being a climate scientist, I found it to be entirely irresponsible to fly to my new job. My CO2 emissions were already quite enormous. I decided to find an alternative route from Amsterdam to Boulder without an airplane. Online I found a ship, the Catamaran de Namica, from Captain Robert Bachmann. This ship could take me across the Atlantic Ocean. I found this plan to be super exciting, and my sister convinced me to document my journey. The plan is as follows. With the bus and the train, I will travel to Spain. From Spain, I will cross the Atlantic Ocean to the United States. And there, I will continue to boulder, mostly by bike. I have three months left before I have to start with my job, and I have no idea if I can get there on time. This is going to be a super exciting adventure, where I'm going to meet a lot of new people. I'm very curious if these people can provide me with new insights on how travel can become more sustainable. From my hometown in Amsterdam, I travel by bus and train to Amelie Mar on the south coast of Spain. There I jump aboard the Namica. With Captain Robert Bachmann, we sail to Las Palmas aboard the Namaka. I have no clue as to how I should document my journey. I also have to get used to the new people and the large waves all around me. This is surely a more daunting experience than anticipated. I asked Robert and my fellow sailor Klaus what drove them to make this journey and how the Namaka has been prepared for the crossing of the Atlantic. Der Traum, um diese Welt zu umrunden, liegt schon ganz lange bei mir im Herzen. Es ist die Liebe zu den Elementen auch. Die Liebe zum Wasser, zur Sonne, zum Wind, zum Meer. Ja, es war schon ein langer Traum von mir, eine Atlantiküberquerung äh, zu machen. Äh, dieses Erlebnis der freien Natur, 10, 20 Tage äh, nur auf sich selbst allein gestellt zu sein. Äh, die Technologie, die da ist, zu beherrschen, ist ja auch wichtig. Tolle Erfahrung. Also das Schiff, die Namaka, ist ein Katamaran und ist jetzt für weltweite Fahrt ausgerüstet. Das heißt Solarzellen aufgebaut, äh, um Energieversorgung unabhängig zu gestalten. Wassermacher eingebaut, um Süßwasser auf den Weltmeeren selbstständig herstellen zu können. Damit kann das Schiff wochen- und notfalls monatelang autonom äh, über die Weltmeere fahren und braucht also keinen Hafen. Nou, om weer acht dagen onderweg te zijn, ben ik dan nu eindelijk in de koel van Cadiz. Waar is dat? Ja, dat is dus hier. Even een rondje. Water. En nog meer water. En nog meer water. Veel water. Schapenwolkjes. Mooie zon. Zeilschip. Wat Duitsers. En ik. Strong winds in the Gulf of Cadiz sway the Namaka in the most terrible ways. I get super seasick and spend multiple days on my bed. I realize that sailing on open sea does not suit everyone, not even on this short leg from Almerie Mar to Las Palmas. I'm starting to doubt myself. Will I be able to endure the crossing of the Atlantic Ocean? Puerto de las Palmas, we zijn er. Zes dagen op zee. Helemaal naar de Getver. Tijd voor een break. En dan over drie dagen door de oceaan over. 
Nu even spullen opruimen zoals je kan zien. De kaart aan het haken. Ze moeten even meehelpen. Las Palmas, Gran Canaria. The place where you start your journey across the Atlantic Ocean. Here you arrange supplies for three weeks of sailing and perform the last routine checks. My seasickness of the last couple of days has made me terrified of the crossing. I would rather go home. I call with friends and family and after much contemplation decide to continue. Everyone tells me that the potential for seasickness diminishes as soon as the wind is at our backs. I also loathe the prospect of flying back to the Netherlands, canned up like a sardine. But above all, this journey is too important to me. Although I have zero experience in the making of a documentary, I find it essential to show everyone that you can cross the Atlantic Ocean without emitting CO2. Morgen gaan we de overtocht maken over de oceaan naar Granada. En nu maken we even inkopen. Goedemorgen. <laughs> dat is Klaus. Ja. Hi. Klaus vaart uh, ook mee. En uh, dat is Tobias. Bijna naar Duitsland. En uh, ja, we zijn alle vrol om die Europeerland te maken morgen. We are on our way. The journey from Las Palmas to Granada has begun. Three weeks on the open ocean. I asked Robert how he's doing and whether or not more people can cross the Atlantic Ocean this way. Meine Erfahrungen mit der Reise bis jetzt sind durchaus positiv. Ich komme in einen anderen Rhythmus. Das ist auch genau die Antwort auf die Frage, ob das mehr Menschen machen können. Das können sicher mehr Menschen machen, allerdings müssen sie mehr Zeit mitbringen. Wenn wir langsamer werden, und äh, andere Taktung haben, dann sind solche Dinge möglich. Wir sind nicht äh, wie mit dem Flugzeug in äh, zehn Stunden in der Karibik, sondern wir brauchen hier drei Wochen, vier Wochen, je nach Wind. Wir sind abhängig von den Elementen. Wir können uns da nicht unabhängig machen. Äh, für jemand, der diesen Deal eingehen will, den Umgang mit den Elementen und sich darauf einlässt, dass sie nicht so verlässlich sind, äh, Dan is dat zeker interessant. Er moet allerdings tijd mitbringen. En we zijn nog lang niet daar, nog lang niet, nog lang niet. En we zijn nog lang niet daar, want het is nog fucking ver. <laughs> ik weet niet of dit uh, iets is wat weer mensen kunnen doen op een regel regulaire basis. Ik denk het eigenlijk niet. Dus ik moet echt een andere, andere manier bedenken om. Uh, het vliegkooi op te lossen naar de andere kant van Azië. Dit is niet de oplossing, denk ik. Of het moet echt uh, enorme zeilschippen gemaakt worden. Waarop je gewoon allemaal dingen kunt doen met elkaar en kan sporten en kan bewegen. En tegelijkertijd kan zeilen. Misschien draai ik nog wel bij de komende dagen. Nu heb ik in ieder geval wel echt uh, helemaal geen zin in. We moeten nog. We moeten nog. 17 dagen. Five days on the open ocean and 17 days to go to Grenada. The last few days were very hard on me, mentally and physically. I did not expect that life on sea would be so much different. The lonely and tiring night watches. The endless hours during the day with nothing to do. The total change in my appetite. All my routines changed completely and I learned the importance of social interaction on this little boat with only four men to talk to. This is what my fellow German sailors meant when they referred to Seemannschaft. The totally unexpected fish on the hook awoke everyone from their daydreams and resulted in a much appreciated break in the daily procedures, every single time. It was fascinating to see how something so trivial could be so important. I saw birds plunge down into the ocean time after time in the hope of catching little fish that I discovered dead on her deck the next morning.
Nature brought back to its primal essence. Infinite amounts of water around you, 24 hours a day, 22 days in a row. It makes you realize how tiny we truly are, and you need a lot of self-worth and perseverance to stay sane. Beautiful sunsets and rises become the new and only normal. Dolphins that swim along your cabin when you wake up as the morning news. The stars up in the sky and the rising moon watch over you during all those hours alone behind the rudder in the night. This journey is totally worth it. I think my highlight was certainly that I caught a blue marlin. And it tastes fantastic. It's fresher and nachhaltiger. It's not fresh from the sea. Direkt verzerrt. Einfach toll. Holy Scheiß! Oh, ein Marlin! Hey! Wow! Ja, sehr gut. Achtung! Oh, oh, weg, warte. Hier bist du weg. Ja, dann den nächsten Haken hier. Schauen wir den noch. Schauen wir mal, ob das geht. Holy shit. Aber ich weiß nicht, ob du in die Kiemen kommst. Reich in die Kiemen. Das ist das Zappel. Das ist das Zappel. Ja, die, die, die Spitze ist vorne zu krass. <lacht> wow, ich hab alles. So. Okay. So. Das Geräusch, Herr Jantje. <lacht> <laughs> Eins, zwei. Eins, zwei, drei. So. The catch of the blue marlin in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean was very unsettling to me. This mythical creature, glorified among fishermen, fought two hours straight to stay alive. Its slaughter perplexed me. I had the feeling that we had damaged the living ocean around us by removing this magical marlin from its home. I was not able to swallow a single bite. I feel increasingly comfortable aboard the Namaka. Although the first days of the Atlantic crossing were hard, I am now starting to find my way. The moment that I accepted that this journey brings a lot of time without a designated way to fill it was the moment that I started to understand its value. I am no longer seasick and I feel like documenting my journey. I start a conversation with Robert and Klaus about the CO2 problem. CO2 is very complex. Man sieht es nicht, man spürt es nicht. Was man sieht, ist Plastik im Meer. Das ist visuell erfassbar, aber CO2 ist ganz schwierig. Und nur eine Person, die ein ausreichendes Einkommen hat, wird sich mit den Themen beschäftigen. Ganz arme Leute, die um ihr Essen und um ihre Unterkunft sich kümmern müssen, werden diese Themen selten behandeln. Also es ist die Bedürfnispyramide. Man muss unten Bedürfnisse, die Grundbedürfnisse befriedigt haben, um an die Umwelt zu denken. Die Abgabenhöhe für zum Beispiel CO2-Belastung muss man gerecht verteilen. Das ist ganz wichtig. Gerecht verteilen heißt jeder nach seinen Möglichkeiten. Aber es muss für beide verbindlich sein. Wie die Möglichkeiten verteilt sind, das ist unterschiedlich. Es geht über das Monetäre, über das Geld. Es geht aber auch über das Verhalten. Und da kann auch jemand, der arm ist, kann auch seinen Beitrag leisten im Rahmen seiner Möglichkeiten. Ich habe schon, denke ich mal, ein gutes Bewusstsein äh, gegenüber äh, Energie zu sparen und wenig CO2 zu verbrauchen. Aber im Alltag ist es äh, schwierig und ist bei mir nicht so fest, äh, verfestigt, äh, dass ich jetzt jederzeit dran denke, hier könntest du sparen, da nicht. Also soweit ist es bei mir nicht gedrungen. CO2 sparen muss Spaß machen. Das heißt, das Bewusstsein der Menschen muss sich ändern. Die müssen Spaß dran bekommen, CO2 zu sparen. Wenn ich Carsharing-Modelle fahre, dann lerne ich vielleicht andere Leute kennen. Oder ich habe viel mehr Kontakte, das kann Spaß machen. Hans Webbe. Eine Botschaft an die Follower. Follower? Ja. Yeah. Es ist wert. It is, it is worth it to go without a plane.
Laatste avond. After three weeks with such phenomenal sunsets, the end of the Atlantic crossing is at hand. My conversations aboard the Namaka have provided me with new insights into the climate crisis. I now understand that lowering our CO2 emissions will be easier if we make it fun. That is exactly what we need to show. And who should be the one to show this? The people that walk atop the pyramid of needs. The people that have the time and the wealth to give the good example by being the good example. This insight will stick with me for the rest of my journey. Tomorrow we will arrive in Grenada, in the Caribbean. The crossing was beautiful, but after three weeks on the ocean, I cannot wait to feel land under my feet again. We have arrived. Time for adventure and to explore Grenada. I was surrounded by water over the last few weeks, which limited social interaction. Back ashore, I feel ready to get to know lots of new people and to ask them about their ways of travel. My name is Nakia and I'm a well-known soca artist here on the island. Everybody call me Miss Fluffy. <laughs> I did come to Grenada by airplane, yes. And I use airplane a lot. <laughs> do you think you can do that a little bit, little bit less? <sighs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. No. <laughs> Maybe I can try, but if it's a Caribbean island, I do take boats. Yeah, but long distance. Yeah, because I think it would take like two weeks or so to get to Jamaica. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know if I can do like the two weeks. My name is LaShan Patrice Robbins, but everybody on Exoma calls me Kat. When I first came to the island, if I didn't have to rush, I liked going on the ferry just because it provided a good view. And if you have a few good friends who are traveling with you, it really made for a really exciting time, especially if the waters are calm. If you could see all the stars and the moon, so it, it's really beautiful. I am Stalit, the Rake and Scrape General, the party animal, the life to Bohemian music. Every show is either in a different country or on a different island. And for time, just for time fact, I will have to end up taking an aircraft uh, to my show destination. I probably prefer to take a ship just for relaxation. You know, time can, the, the time isn't really a big deal if you leave ahead, you can actually um, prepare mentally. The travel is adventurous. The, uh, you meet people on the way. You, you know, it's a different part of life. You get to know of your surroundings. You get, to, you, you get to love where you live, what you have. You get to see what you, ex you get exposed to, what you have around you. So that's just basically it. You turn me on. Turn me on. You turn me on. I've been waiting for you long time. I'm waiting for you, boy. I've been waiting for you long time. I'm waiting for you, boy. Hey, Fluffy, you bring the energy, bring the chemistry, make me buzz on Cause you love my energy, love my chemistry, make me buzz on You think you could dance to it? Me? Yeah. Probably. Ready? It's all about funny rhythm alongside us. Turn me on. It's turn me on. Turn me on. It's turn me on. I've been waiting for you a long time. I'm waiting for you, boy. I've been waiting for you a long time. I'm waiting for you, boy. Hey, you feel you bring the energy, bring the chemistry, make me buzz with you. Miss Fluffy, Kat and Stalit shared with me that they prefer traveling by boat, but that a lack of time often forces them to choose the airplane, even in the Caribbean. I'm happy that I chose to take the time to travel without an airplane. This not only allows me to reduce my CO2 footprint, but also enables me to experience the beauty of the Caribbean. We 
hier met gevaar voor eigen leven te documenteren. Oh. De zeilen staan strak, negen knoten, keihard. En de Santa Lucia hebben de twee Signice bergen voor ons. On St. Lucia, I say farewell to my fellow sailors Klaus and Tobias. I have a lot more distance to cover and less and less time to arrive in Boulder on time. I'm starting to worry. Robert offers to sail on at a faster pace than before. I accept this offer straight away, but underestimate how much labor is required to sail Dynamica with just the two of us. After six days of non-stop sailing, Robert and I arrive completely exhausted in Luperon in the Dominican Republic. It is here that I meet Skat. She also sailed across the Atlantic. For centuries, Luperon provides a safe haven for sailors and their ships during the hurricane season. Today, the harbor is relatively unoccupied, as more and more people prefer to travel to the Dominican Republic by airplane. Why do we persist in our choice to fly, time after time? I discuss this with Skat in a garden of a desolated mansion that overlooks Luperon's quiet marina. You want me to put my hand like this? Is your head? I already saw myself. All right. I need to cross the ocean because my family is from South America. I was one, uh, wondering how I can do it without take a plane. It's polluting a lot, actually. A lot, a lot, the environment. You are in Europe. You take a flight, maybe eight hours later, you are in another country totally different of your environment mm -hmm. and you don't realize you have this jet lag it's not like natural mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. a boat is closer of the of the nature because sure. you have all the element with you you have the animals surrounding you every time if i take the plane everything is is conditioned for you to travel on your own i mean everything is a single thing in plastic single Glass. Well, you know, when you're traveling with a boat, you share things with all the people around you. It could be an alternative to the plane, but actually I don't think that people will take the time to do this. You and me will do it because they have time, but we don't have time actually. It's not our time. The time is just running. We just decide probably to, to We do decide it. to fill our time. Yeah, exactly. We are in this society who build jail around us. And I think the plane could give us the impression to, to fly and have a feeling to be free. But actually you can just like go in a country and consume the country. You have one weekend. Yeah, this weekend you're in Spain. Oh, this weekend let's go to Russia. Okay, this is the worst thing to do, I think, for why is me. It, why is it the worst thing to do? Because you take the plane to do so, you know, and you, you, you go to Russia, you take all the pictures, you show to all your friends, we went to Russia, but you don't even speak to Russian people. You're just coming and consuming their culture, you know? I've done it, yeah. something like that. And how yeah. did you feel? I feel terrible. Yeah. Like you're back in your work and it's like, did I actually do something? All those things are something that make you think that you're free. Nobody's free. Yeah, and traveling without a fly and a boat or a biking, you meet people a lot. And you are not coming to one point to the other to take picture. You, you are meeting yourself too. And you know, after this, I think your mind changed a lot. So you may actually be more free if you travel slower. The interview with Skat was very special to me. I found it comforting that Skat and I had experienced the Atlantic crossing in the same way. I also realized that Skat understood my previous travels much better than I did myself. She made me realize that my many flights to holiday destinations had not truly provided me with a lot of personal growth. It was as if I had bought myself moments of rest by devouring the culture of other countries. I realize now 
that it would have also been possible to purchase these brakes in a sustainable and renewable way by choosing my trips closer to home. Pocket, pocket, pocket. This is Namaka. Do you read? Ik doe nu een aantal hopeloze pogingen om uh, een um, passage te vinden naar Florida. Uh, je hebt hier via de radio een aantal netjes waar je met de mensen contact kan hebben en uitwisselen wat je plannen zijn. En daar heb ik gevraagd voor een uh, rit naar Florida. Er waren twee mensen die bij een ander uh, onderwerp aangaven dat ze um, vandaag vertrekken of morgen vertrekken richting die kant op. Dus die probeer ik nu al de hele ochtend uh, te bereiken. Uh, zonder resultaat, maar ik ga het nog één keer doen en kijken of het lukt. Providence, Providence, Providence. This is Namaka. Over. <laughs> Zo moeilijk is het dus om een boot te vinden naar de overkant. After nine long weeks at sea, I say farewell to Robert in Georgetown, in the Bahamas. Without him, I would have never been able to complete this journey. I cannot find continued passage by sailing vessel to Florida, so I decide to book a trip on a mailboat and two ferries. In doing so, I decide to emit some CO2, as these ships burn fossil fuels. On the Namaka, we also use the engine at times of little wind, or when we had to enter or depart from a harbor. Even I do not have enough time to wait for favorable winds or another sailing vessel to take me along. Yet, the CO2 emissions of my journey will be far lower than those of a flight from Amsterdam to Boulder. Furthermore, ships can be engineered to operate with renewable electricity. This is not yet and may never be possible for airplanes. I thus find peace in my little CO2 emissions. Just before I board the ferry to Florida, I meet Hannah. Hannah is from New York and traveled here by airplane as she did not have enough days off to sail to Nassau. I ask her if traveling less could be an option for her. The possibility of traveling less isn't terrible, but I think there's a certain amount of personal growth that would be lost, especially in people who don't read. Because then how else do you learn, like genuinely learn about other cultures and traditions and experience other people's... I mean, you, you can't really experience other people's lives in a trip, but you get a better idea than like just watching the most popular things from that country on television. And I think if people are traveling for the sake of experiencing, like really experiencing other cultures, then I don't think you should travel less. I think we should travel more. But if you're just going to sit on a beach, then yeah, you know, you don't really need to go. <laughs> I can okay. stop traveling so much. <laughs> I don't know if, if I would categorize sustainable travel as super slow or just healthier. I probably would say it's healthier. And so if that means not using planes anymore or taking more time, I'm open to that. I mean, the whole point of, for me, vacationing is to take time <laughs> to relax and whatever it looks like. If it means taking two days to get somewhere instead of two hours, that's still part of the experience. On the ferry from Fort Lauderdale to Florida, I slowly transition from the slow life at sea to the rushed life on land. I no longer have enough time to bike the entire distance from Florida to Boulder, so I decide to take a bus to New Orleans, from where I will start my journey by bike. Negen weken op zee. En best wel anticlimax als je dan het laatste stuk met zo'n ferry moet, maar het is voorbij. Ik ben in Florida. En uh, we zo graag als een hondje. Nu kijken hoe lang deze logistiek duurt. Eigenlijk best wel eenzaam. Dat zou leuk zijn als ik nu gewoon opgewacht werd door 10.000 mensen die zeggen: Joep, je bent gedaan. Maar ze werken niet in het leven. Ik ben helemaal alleen. Dus ik moet toch echt uh, mezelf blij maken. Ik ben wel blij hoor. Dat was het waard. Vandaag afscheid van de oceaan. Ja, ik
slapen. Maar goed, weg met nieuwe leads. Uh, Zara is voorbij. De fietsreis gaat nu beginnen. Nu ben ik bij Bicycle Michaels. Dit is Michael. Hij heeft me geholpen met de fiets. Alles op en eraan, tassen, de hele, de hele bende. In één dag gefixt. Helemaal nice. Have a good trip. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, at last I hit the road. After nine weeks on the ocean, with little more movement than some push-ups on the front deck. 2300 kilometers of American roads ahead of me. I have three weeks left to start my job in Boulder, and I plan to bike 160 kilometers a day, which will allow me a couple of days of rest. Along the way, I spend the night with people of the warm showers community that offer cyclists a place to stay in their homes. On my first night, I enjoy Rodney's hospitality. Rodney has also biked a lot in his life and gives me a warm welcome. I ask him how he feels about flying and the inevitable emissions of CO2. Most of what we do is ambiguous. Most of what we're confronted with in the world is ambiguous. And it's good and it's bad. And, you know, I fly in airplanes. I have flown in airplanes all over the world. Um, do I think we should be doing that? No. Do I think it's good? Yeah. I've had all kinds of experiences and learned all kinds of things about other cultures. You asked me if I thought taxing fossil fuels, making them more expensive, would help with the problem. Yeah, partly. Um, but I also think we're addicted to fossil fuels. We're addicted to everybody having a car and going wherever they want. And it's, that's a hard habit to break. It's a hard habit to break. Our current society is indeed powered mostly by fossil fuels. Yet here and there, people consciously start to say no to the emission of CO2. Good examples are the customers of the Red Moon Farm of Jessica. Her farm operates in an organic way with minimal use of fossil fuels. I asked Jessica about her means for travel and how she can make those more sustainable. We travel a couple times a year. One of those trips is usually by plane and the other one is usually by car. One simple thing that I could do is um, do some research before planning our trips to see what method of getting to our destination is gonna be um, you know, the lowest carbon footprint. We should do more of that. Um, and then I think probably we could enjoy more of our adventures a little bit closer to home instead of traveling thousands of miles by plane. Er komt een moment in een mans leven dat hij zeven uur lang tegen de wind ingefietst heeft op een rechte lijn. Om vervolgens aan te komen op zo'n troosteloze plek waar het naar scheid stinkt. Dat hij denkt, zou mijn beeld ook nog wel goed voelen. During the endless biking, sometimes 10 hours straight with just a short lunch break, 
I am well aware that my journey is not an option for everyone. You clearly need a lot of time, but also energy, perseverance, enough stamina and money. I am grateful that I have the privilege to travel and experience the world this way. Yet I believe that my journey can certainly be an example for how things can be different. You always have a choice in how you travel, for your job and your time off, and you can decide how much time to spend on it. Say we decide to only travel locally, as Jessica suggested, then that will not only change the way we look at the world around us and treat one another, but also the way our economy operates. I continue this conversation with Adam in his hostel in Amarillo, Texas. I am Adam Jenkins, running a hostel. I'm all about making travel affordable because I feel that travel makes a more egalitarian society by exposing other cultures to the world. Then we learn that we all have a lot in common and I get to meet cool people like yourself. In America, we identify with our vehicles. It, you know, the Route 66, the mother road, and the, and the open, the, the freedom of, of our society, a lot of it is our identity is in the IndyCar 500, Daytona, NASCAR. So we have to change our mindsets and change our culture to be a, a more forward-thinking, uh, utilitarian society. So we have to say, hey, we can, we can have a culture around bicycles. We can do it. We have to consciously choose to adapt. I say travel local. You know, I live in a rather arid, some might say less beautiful part of the world. But there are so many climates in every direction. So I travel locally. I've gone to the southeast and I've been in the swamps and I've canoed through the, the, the alligators and I've seen Parisian gardens and salt domes and I've traveled to the west at the southwest where I've seen deserts and the biggest caves in the world. And, and I've been to the south where there's palm trees in the Rio Grande Valley. And I've traveled to the north where there's mesas. And all that that I just described was less than two days drive away. Or, or I mean, or uh, less than a week's bicycle ride. So really, I think we can't under, undervalue what we have at our fingertips. Well, we have to have thought leaders. Those of us who are conceptualizing and, and actualizing these goals are being leaders for others. So they are seeing us and it, we're implanting that in their minds. And so when they see a cyclist commuting to work, they say, wow, maybe that is possible. If he can do it, then who's to say I can't do it? Oh, well, I thought it was too dark to ride, but I see his bright lights. Or I thought it was too far, but he's going 10 miles. I just have to go three. I can do that. Or he's going 1,500 kilometers in 11 days. Maybe I should go for a bicycle ride today. <laughs> My conversation with Adam inspired me deeply. I start to understand more and more what we need to do in order to make our world economy sustainable. We need so many more examples that show us how fun sustainable travel can be. Ransom is one of my examples. He and others biked thousands of kilometers through the United States to plant trees and dispose of trash. I would like to see certain legislation passed. Federally, I know I can't count on the government to fix things for me, um, and they can't fix them for other people, so it's not a good solution for other people to wait on big governments to make those big changes. Um, we can't depend on them. Um, it has to happen on a local level and then spread outward. Um, so maybe start in your city, wherever you live, start in your city and say, okay, I wanna get rid of single use plastics. Uh, I wanna start some sort of campaign or petition or whatever you need to do um, and then spread out from there. I mean, I think we've seen it with uh, certain laws um, in the US where it is a state by state thing and then eventually it gets um, passed federally. So I think it, it has to be at a local level. Um, and first on an individual level, um, you have to be the one that says, okay, I'm not gonna do certain things and I'm gonna live my life in a way that's um, healthy for other people and the planet and everything. It's, just, it's one system, we're all in it together. <laughs> so go make a change. Brent
Branson, Colorado. I have arrived. Or well, I have arrived in Colorado. After nearly three months, I have arrived in the state that I need to be in. After nearly 16,000 kilometers over sea and over land, I have 500 kilometers left to go. But when I registered the sign of Colorado, I collapsed entirely. I turned very ill and had to recover for three days in the middle of nowhere. I brought you some things to make you feel better. So good. Homemade vegetable stock, pineapple, sit around for a while, maybe to hydrate you. So yeah, it was frozen, obviously. Yogurt, berries, strawberries. So maybe something will make your stomach feel better. Thank you. Thank <laughs> You're you. You're welcome. I'll give you a hug. I'm so glad to help you. I'm so glad to have. I will never forget the hospitality, help and care of Jody and Brett. I can now continue on the last stretch to Boulder. On these final miles by bike, I take the time to reflect on my journey. I have come to realize that traveling takes time, but also provides time in return. Time that allowed me to have sustainable relationships with the environment and people around me. And that showed me that reducing my CO2 emissions can be so valuable and fun. Although three months may sound like a long time, it brought about an unbelievable amount of personal growth, which I would not have traded for anything in the world. On my way to Boulder, I passed through Monument, that witnessed a big snowstorm in late March. Here I meet David, who builds wooden furniture in his spare time. I asked David whether or not an individual is capable to influence others. Do I have the ability to change people? Sure, I, I think on a very small basis, yes. And I think, I like to think that, that I have changed people, that people look at your lifestyle, like, like maybe even uh, your, your children that you raise. They see the way you live your life and they say, that, that's, a, that's a good way to live and I want to live like that. And I think that's influenced people. So yeah, I, I definitely think you can influence people. Last stretch from Monument to Boulder. It's min 5 graden. It's cold. So we're going to go fast. We're going to do the last 160 kilometers. And then, uh, veel rust and lekker aan het werk. David hit a nail on the head. Role models can inspire, and he was not alone. Everyone on my journey taught me how things can be different. Robert taught me how sustainable sailing can be. Klaus taught me how slow travel can be amazing if you do it together. Sket taught me the value of letting go of time. To solve the climate crisis, we all need to become role models. Some that show us how to grow as a person by traveling slow or local, during our commute and on our holidays. Others that show us how to enjoy planet Earth by using technology in a sustainable way, through the use of the high-tech catamaran of Robert, for example. Technology alone, however, will most certainly not reduce the problematic emission of CO2. The way in which we choose to use the materials around us, and especially our choice to use them less, will ultimately solve this problem. My journey has now come to an end. I have truly arrived in Boulder exactly one day prior to the start of my new job at the University of Colorado. I said no to the CO2 emissions of an airplane by taking an alternative route. My adventurous trip to the United States with the train, the bus, the boat and the bike lasted three months. By taking this time, I emitted much less CO2 than the airplane. This makes me very happy. Nou, we zijn er hoor bij University of Colorado Boulder. Ik ben helemaal tevreden. Het was een mooie reis en um, ik heb nu volgens mij heel veel adrenaline. Eerst even rustig aan doen en zoals ik eerder al zei, aan het werk. Vergeet niet dat je ook in je eigen leven duurzaam kan bezig zijn. En uh, onthoud onze leus CO2, CO nee. <laughs>